This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation of Hard Grants is brought to you by Alive, Bahamas Bus and Truck, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, Marcos Pizza, Mobile Garage Technologies, and Scotia Bank. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation, right here um, uh, on this beautiful Wednesday. Uh, it's out here. It's a beautiful day. Uh, this, isn't it a nice holy week? Is it? Is it been quiet for you? It's been quiet for me, right? Um, and I'm grateful for it. I got some fish from my uh, father-in-law, so we're going to be able to deal with that this weekend. Uh, he sent me some group all, so he's a good, decent man. P- bless him. Amen. So we're going to be able to deal with that this weekend. Um, we're going to hear more about platinum pastries when they come tomorrow about they are hot cross buns. Buns. We talked to you about it. Um, uh, Fifteen dollars for a pan. He put the information out there. Uh, great looking stuff. If you want to be able to get more information, I can shoot you a flyer. Hit me up eight two seven zero one one one, so I can hit you up with the flyer and let you know exactly what's what. But my weekend. Um, well, well, the past few days have been rather quiet for me. The kids aren't feeling well, man. Let's just talk about it. I don't know whether or not this this kind of a viral infection has been going on in the environment ever since COVID. Right. And so you send the kids to school. They're sick and sniffly. They got to come home. They get better for a week or so. You send them back in the environment. They get sick and sniffly. And, you know, the cycle continues. It's wild. Right. And so whilst we thought we we're going to have a few days to be able to relax and throw the children in the sea or something. Right. You know, I, well, figuratively and literally talk to me. Let's just throw them in the sea. So, <laughs> so, so we thought we we're going to be able to do that this weekend. But, you know, the babies. My son getting a little fever, man, on, off, the little one, on, off, but he feels better. So, you know, I took care of him. You know, good, decent daddy. Mommy, too. I mean, you know, she in it, too. But, you know, the good, decent daddy was able to do that, right? But it's been a beautiful weekend and a uh, beautiful few days, rather. And uh, looking forward to the weekend, you know, we have an extended play. We got Friday and Monday. Um, uh, we got Good Friday and Easter Monday, Resurrection Monday. Do we call it Resurrection Monday? Easter Monday, right? So we can be able to do that and really have a good time and enjoy ourselves this weekend. So if you go into the beach, take care of yourself. I got an opportunity to be able to talk to Anthony Bullard yesterday from B5. He says, how let me deal with this truck. I said, not now. Wait, 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 wait. He said, how what you mean? Right now, I come in for the truck. I said, no, hold on. No, no, no. I want to take the children to the beach this weekend. So, you know, they can bring all, they can track the sun and so forth and so on. So let's take our time. We'll deal with that next week. Let me get a chance to be able to do that, right? But uh, as it relates to the show today, I want to be able to talk with you guys directly. You know, we've been rather somber this week and really being able to have uh, introspection, right? We've had an opportunity to be able to really examine ourselves, uh, our society, and the way that we deal with each other. On Monday, had a very good conversation. I enjoyed that. I, I don't know if you did. You did. I love the engagement with you guys. And uh, yesterday I had a great opportunity to be able to talk to my very good friend, Ambassador Devin Roll. And uh, he sort of broke it down from the church perspective. And I wanted to know about 
this sort of a push at the forefront to be able to to be inclusive? Is it a desire to be inclusive? And to surmise the conversation, it was really about being able to to speak to uh, the sins and the immorality that exists in these particular spaces. And just as we spoke about Uganda and them being able to stand in their convictions in this particular area as it relates to the anti-gay bill, notwithstanding the fact that they have continuous, relentless issues that surround them, they've stood on this particular issue. And so the conversation was really about conviction and whether or not we are willing to stand for what we believe in. One time ago, this wouldn't exist. It just wouldn't, right? Uh, even the speculation, the, the, the sort of an idea couldn't exist. In the, and that's not neglecting, rejecting, negating the fact that uh, people who live these alternative, and y'all, I know you, the fellow tell me he don't want me to say alternative lifestyles, but this is the politically correct space that I want to be able to talk in. You know, let's be decent, all right? Notwithstanding that people have decided to be able to take on a uh, specific and strategic position and embracing this alternative lifestyle, alternative to the tradition and the norm and the expectation and sort of the design that we've been designed to do. People accepted this ulterior, ulterior uh, alternative lifestyle and um, they've been castigated and for a very long time they've been in the quote-unquote closet, right? So you talk about these things. Uh, in the early 80s, you would have conversations about the fact that HIV AIDS was a gay disease. And that led to another thing there, right? And so for one reason or the other, they, a lot of persons who live that lifestyle find themselves in San Francisco. And you would have heard years ago that San Francisco would have been the gay capital of America, so forth and so on. Now they're shifting to Atlanta the gay black capital of America, so forth and so on. So let's, let's, I want to talk about this. And, and, I, and I bring this to the forefront because, you know, over the past two days, I don't know whether or not this, this particular aspect of our society is the proverbial prick that is, like Paul say, this, this, this prick wouldn't leave me alone no matter what I do. I don't know whether or not this is that thing for us. I don't know whether, I know that we, we harp on it and we continue to be able to talk about it, but I don't know whether or not if it's that much of an issue that we feel so indifferent about it. Because it existed. It has always existed. You know the person in your family who chooses to move in a different direction. You know these people. Many of us acknowledge this. Some of us understand and maybe would have gone to a few weddings with persons who live this kind of a lifestyle, but yet, you know, you're still enraged in this space. I really don't know if it's about that. I think our, the bubbling anger that we have, has a, you need to be able to identify a target to hit it on. So one day it's immigration, the next day is the LGBTQ community, the next day it's, you know, your cousin, whoever it is who owe you $20, it's wild. And so the issue is, how are we going to be able to rectify some of these disdain that we carry with ourselves you know somebody come to me the other day i can tell you a little short story and the lines are wide open if you want to be a part of the conversation 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259 hit me up with the text 422-4796 uh guy comes to me and walk down the stairs i don't want to tell you who the guy is right i try to be decent as possible <laughs> oh god let, let me be decent it's holy week right so I'm coming down the stairs from the Guardian, walking down the stairs, and, you know, I see someone I haven't seen. I say, hey, boy, what's up? No, nah, i got to rush to pick up the kids. So I say, hey, boy, what's up, man? He said, I would be good to get together, man. I see you a little while. You're hiding from me. I say, boy, you got my numbers. Hit me up. Right? He said, all right, I got to call you. Right? <laughs> so I, I say, all right, we can see you later. He said, yeah, because we got to get uh, Dr. Hubert Minnis back in office. And so I almost choke midstream. I couldn't. I say, what? I think he's cheering me a little cough too, right? Because it's this wild. This is crazy. So I, I swing around. I look at him. I say, boy, are you out of your mind? Right? So, so this we talking, right? And I try my hardest to be decent. And in the spirit of decency, I won't tell you everything that I told him. But I say that to say this. He says, Howard, this is the Lenten season. Let us learn to forgive and forget 
and move on. I couldn't have an in-depth conversation with him because I don't think he's forgiven the PLP yet. He's my good guy. You listen in, you know who I'm talking to. I'm not fighting him, all right? So in the spirit of the Lenten season, concentrated here in this holy week, I think we have to do some introspection and understand that there's some heaviness that we've been carrying around of unforgiveness. Political, church unforgiveness, school, marital, or spousal, um, um, family-oriented unforgiveness. This sort of a brokenness that we've been carrying with us. That's the proverbial bags. And normally that, that bag lady is always attached to a woman. But the truth is, is that for a great deal of us guys, may, maybe we don't talk about it, but it's a sensitive subject. My wife keep banging on me the, uh, the other day to talk about something, something that I did my best to suppress in my mind, right? And she asked me about it, and I said, I, I don't really feel like talking about it. She said, why? And she kept pushing. I said, listen, baby, I don't want to talk about it. And she kept pushing. I said, listen, you have to understand that men travel through a specific course without a desire, especially in our society, to be able to express femininity. And so we do our best to kind of suppress, whether that be alcoholic beverages, whether that be sex, whether that be drugs, whether that be some sort of addiction, to be able to blot out, omit this sort of a trauma that we engaged, that, that happened to us at one point in our lives. I think all of us had this sort of a trauma. And for most of us, it's been childhood trauma. And so when I said that out loud, because you know, I've not dealt with it for a very long time. And when I said it out loud, and she got quiet, and she just was listening to me, and I was able to really speak about it, I realized that maybe I was carrying some unforgiveness. And so I had to kind of search myself to find out where else, which other pockets do I have this sort of an unforgiveness in me? And so I prayed about it. I prayed about it, put it before the Father, and put it at my, the frontal lobe in my consciousness to say that for me to be the best that I intend to be, that I espouse to be, that I desire to be, I'm going to have to be deliberate in rectifying some of this unforgiveness. So I, I think this is a good season to kind of do that, all right? And so for you, I forgive you. If I owe you money, I forgive you, right? <laughs> I forgive you, all right? I forgive you if you did me wrong. I really do. And I thought about it, and then you saw you sort of travel back in your mind, and you kind of put these things on a, on a table, and you identify this. Where did I go? Was this, how did I feel at this particular point? And so you look at all these things and you make a determination as to whether or not this unforgiveness has shaped the reality that you exist in today. We could change that. We could change that. And there's no need for you to inherit this sort of an unforgiveness. I watched a clip the other day. Um, this lady standing over the casket of her mother, a dead mother. And uh, as she grieves with these big shades on, you could see the, you know, tears trickling down her face. Hair is done, black girl. And uh, in the midst of her being able to express herself and speak about the life of her mother, she looked around the room and she said, I don't know why you in here. You know, my mommy never used to mess with you. I don't know why you here. And it was wild that she inherited this sort of an unforgiveness and this disdain that she seeks to carry on now. Have we as a society become like that? Have we as a society become so consumed with this commercialism and relentlessly looking and ingesting what's happening in the United States of America and other spaces that we see so readily available, the debauchery readily available on our phones? Have we ingested it to the point that we seem to emulate it, to duplicate it? That's the question I have. I got this clip yesterday. Uh, couple pastors called me. Howard, did you see this? I mean, it was crazy. It was, it was crazy. Let's see, see what? Howard, did you see this? And make sure you pick up your Guardian paper. They start to talk about the Tribune. The Tribune have this thing in there? I mean, it, it was wild. It was, 
the Tribune have this thing in there with two women kissing and getting married on Holy Week. Oh my God. It's, it's crazy. If you pick up the paper yesterday, I didn't have, I never read the comics. I'll be honest with you. I just never read the comics. I, just, I don't, right? I, so I, you know, made it a, a point to go and look at the comics and see, you know, what was all the hullabaloo? What's all this fuss about? So I go in there and I see a comic by the name of Judge, let me see, let me pick it up, open it up. I did a little research on these things. Judge Parker, right? And in Judge Parker, there's a scene where two women are getting married and they're kissing and there's a comic section of the Tribune. This is Judge Parker. This isn't a comic that was made here in this country. This is a comic from all the way in 1952. You can just Google it. All the way from 1952, there has been several different authors and sort of writers for this particular thing. And one is a 55-year-old by the name of Francisco. His last name is Francisco now. And he's rather, you know, progressive. But the core concept of Judge Parker is to sort of emulate society and the choices that people make. You just go, go and read it. And so you sent me this information, and I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not one of those people to be out here and say, let's boycott anyone. That's wild to me. We live in a society big as my palm. That's wild. Every one of us have to eat. We got to pay BPO. We got to do this. And the newspaper industry is feverishly looking for new avenues to be able to attract customers and get them involved again. And for you to be able to have a conversation about merely just rejecting an entire newspaper or rejecting an entire business because you feel indifferent today, it's wild to me. It's wild. Have you scrutinized any other cartoons prior to this? Have you scrutinized anything else? For you to be able to go with this, this culture out of the United States of America that instantaneously seeks to be able to rid you off of the face of the earth because they don't agree with you, that is wild. This is the people call me, we got the bond. What, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? And for most persons, it's just casual. You could say that. I have good friends that I'd like to be able to interview in this space who shared the same sentiments at one point. And the Guardian won't seem to, to provide a platform for these particular persons simply because in the midst of their indifference and their pursued activism, they wanted to say whatever they said. They say whatever they said, that's fine. But to tear down organizations, to tear down these particular, I thought it was wild. I don't necessarily agree with Judge Parker. I don't agree with this. This is birthed from Francisco out of his spirit. I read up and try to figure out if Francisco married where his spirit aligned with. All these things, I couldn't find it. And we bring this thing right home. We buy into these things. It reminds me of when Fred Mitchell, in his particular capacity, as a... Uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs came back from the Vatican and saying that we have to align ourselves with global views. And as private and public sectors take incremental steps of aligning themselves to this view of debauchery globally, there's local pushback. There needs to be more of a conversation rather than just rejecting people. Have we not learned to converse as yet? Talk to me. Let's just, just have we not learned to engage and just look people in the face and say, I don't agree with you. Do we fear that we don't have the articulation and I can't express the way that I feel, so let's just get rid of you entirely? I think we're more mature than that as a people. And I want to open up the lines uh, so you can be able to get a little one, two cents on that if you care to do that. 323-6232-325-431-6325-4259 or hit me up on the text 422-4796. Let me take this telephone call. Call you on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hey, good morning, Howard. Good morning. How you doing? Fine, thank you. I, I'm listening to you, and I'm smiling, and I want to ask a question. You know, we're talking about forgiveness. Talk to me. Have you forgiven Dr. Menick? No, 
I try and do though. <laughs> no, I, I just joke. I joke. But, you know, I say half a joke. Let me just be honest. Because uh, in the spirit of honesty, let's do this. The commitment that I had for him and to him started way before um, Loretta and the crew actually went to him. So I was helping him in the background, saying this, this, and not looking for anything, just saying, I believe, and I said this to him, I believe that you can be the best prime minister of the country's seat if you take on this particular agenda, these ideas, and reform the country. And so, um, um, like a canker worm, he ingested the ideas. Talk to me, let's just be very clear. He ingested the ideas, and many persons could attest to this, but didn't give acknowledgement, nor did he give sort of the right hand of fellowship to pull you in. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. As a young person in this political game, right, when I was in the thing, that could hurt your character, your caliber, but for older folks, the traditional, they see this as a game. Well, there's only a game. But I've heard stories where people had to leave the country because they couldn't find opportunity, because they couldn't do this and couldn't do that. And so I think about these things and think about my heart, genuinely trying to assist you, and how my wrist gets slapped. And so I have to kind of take myself through therapy to pull back from that. But it's all over now, though. It's all over now. It, it, now. it is, you know, but... Um, like I still don't want him to be the next prime minister of this country, you, though. You know. I don't want him to be the next prime minister of this country. Though. I might as well shoot straight No, with you. I'm not looking for that either. Okay, talk to but me. But forgiveness is not for you. I mean, it's not for the person. It's for you. You know, because I, I can understand where you're coming from. I, I know the passage in the Bible where it talks about forgiveness. But I don't remember saying anything about forgetting. It's hard to forget. Uh, okay, so I, I have forgiven him, mm -hmm. you know. But my thing is, there's nothing there that says forget. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna forget. We you forgive know, you. I, you I can live. We ain't got to cuss you every time you take two steps in the country. But Not just that, I will you know, never forget. You realize, um, moving forward, I don't think for now he is the worst we've had. But somehow, because of the way the world is going, I feel like there's worse to come. You know, and even then, we still won't forget because this is a general time in history with COVID and all of that. It's not going to be forgotten no time soon. Wow. I appreciate that. I know why you put that heavy question in before me, but, you know, we can talk about it today. I like your telephone call. Thanks so much. Guys, please give me a call. And listen, I just want to shoot straight. I, I don't believe any of our leaders, at the pinnacle of leadership, I'm talking about prime ministers, have, they possess the ability to, the chameleon spirit. You know the chameleon? You know, when you touch them, it turn a different color. The chameleon spirit, many of them if not all. There were many conversations about our former Prime Minister Lyndon Pinland coming in your house and eating out your store, out your fridge and drinking out your cool water, out your, the, the corn can or the peach can, which you had in the freezer. And, and I have uh, a very good friend and a former barber. He would always tell me, man, Lyndon Pinland eat my last corn when I was in Andres. I was so mad. I could never vote BLB. I said, this is wild. You, you... <laughs> I say, I say, you're not gonna, you're not gonna vote for PLP because he eat your corn. How would I never forget that? I was so hungry that day. I say, but the hunger subside. What are you doing, sir? Right? We had good conversation, laughing about it, right? But it spoke to his humanity and his approachability and his ability to do these things. But there was another side to that. Uh, that kind of a sharp, shrewd politician, uh, you know, cut you off quickly. And I believe that that spirit of a chameleon, I mean, sometimes you have to stand confirm in this kind of position. That spirit is one of the things that we deal with in this country from our leadership, from our leadership. But I must tell you, um, uh, for me, for Howard Grant, I believe that it was sharp as it relates to what Dr. Minnis has done because he had pulled in a tremendous amount of youth. This is a transitional period for the country. And the youth that he pulled in he sought them to dedicate themselves to him, not to the constitution of the free national movement, not to the party, but they wanted to be minocytes, or he wanted them to be minocytes. And that's difficult for me, because there's an overarching object objective of uh, national growth and development that needs to be pushed beyond your agenda. And so I don't want to be aligned with a facade. And that's just what it was for me. But sometimes separation gives you this sort of a clarity in those areas. Let me take a next telephone call. Calling you on the line with this live, go ahead. Good afternoon, Howard. How are you? I'm good, man. What's happening? 
everything is well. I'm um, just calling to comment on the first part of the conversation you're having about um, some commentary or cartoon that was in uh, Tribune and yeah. obviously what it was depicting and was not. I think two two um, two things, and I don't want to call anything an issue. Two things are at play there, right? Obviously, there's a right to speech, and there is conviction and views nationally. Now, clearly, when those two collide, there will be indifference. Mm-hmm. There will always be indifference to the collision of um, differing ideas and views. Um, culturally, mm-hmm. we know what we accept as a nation, and we subscribe to that. And so it is only normal only normal, and I'm not speaking to right or wrong of anything, it is only normal that when someone or any person sees something that seems to depart from what we subscribe to, Mm -hmm. um, there is a reaction to it. Mm -hmm. But now, the second part I want to make a comment to is that on the part of Uganda and and their position, I think the Bahamas is going to come to a place where we have to state our position. You know, you mentioned the part about what's happening internationally and what's not in X, Y, Z. But what does that have to really do with the Bahamas? I think as a nation, that's why we're independent as a nation. We could determine what we want to do for us and or decide to suffer the consequences for that or enjoy the benefits of that, whatever that thing is. So the only comment I want to make is that we will get to a place where we define where we want to be internationally on any topic and where we want to be nationally and on, on any topic. Do you think and in that those is... conversations where the national agenda outweighs the international position, we have to make defining moments in the history of this country. Before and you I go, think we're going to come to that place. Before you in, go, in answer very, this. very, very short. Before you go, answer this question. Do you believe that uh, those things will just happen? by, like the pastor said yesterday, by osmosis, by just being able to accept a new position and automatically change your mindset? Or do you believe that it'll take significant digging and conviction? Because that's all the conversation has been about. Being able to identify a hard choice and being able to cling to that and stand firm on that. Do you believe that choices will come or or this new perspective and view for the country will come without the conviction that we speak of? Talk to me about it. I believe, Howard, given where we are internationally, given our dependence on international economy, I believe, personally, that we will have no choice but to ascribe to, to accept an international agenda, however that affects our um, national position. That is what I believe, because I understand where we sit as an economy in the world that has existed for 50-plus years and beyond that. Matter of fact, let's go hundreds of years. The Bahamas before it was called the Bahamas. Existed because what passes through here, what comes to here every single day. And unless we decide that we want a different kind of Bahamas, a Bahamas that is very poor and struggling and fragile and all those things, the agenda that is international will dictate as it tries to to other nations, and Uganda just decided today, we'll eat, we'll eat less food there. But our day will come, and we have to make that decision as well. I firmly believe that day will come. I appreciate your telephone call, my brother. Thank you so very kindly. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give me a call, 323 Hit me up on the text, 422-4796. Uh, we can be able to chop a few things down. Let me take my first commercial break. I'll be right back after this. Ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant, the foundation. Just chopping it down. The lines are wide open on this hump day Wednesday. Chopping it down before, because this is a short week. We'll be still in the midst of Holy Week. So let's pull the veil down just a piece and have a transparent conversation. We'll be right back after this. The foundation. 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 The foundation. 
At Wendy's, we are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. Tired of paying too many bills and loan payments each month? Shrink your monthly debt payments down to one easy payment with our debt consolidation loan. It also has a built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Inquire about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Wednesdays just got a whole lot better. Introducing Whopper Wednesdays at Burger King Nassau. Get a flame-grilled Whopper for only $5.50, including that. Yes, you heard that right. This Wednesday, you can indulge in the classic flame-grilled Whopper you love, made your way for only $5.50. Stop by your favorite Burger King Nassau location this Wednesday and enjoy a Whopper for only $5.50. Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. At Bahamas Bus and Truck Company Limited, we provide vehicles known for quality and durability. From the iconic Jeep Wrangler to the award-winning Grand Cherokee, we've got your everyday driver covered. For larger tasks, our Ram 1500, Mitsubishi Fuso Canter Trucks, CMC Verica Vans, and Fuso Rosa Jitneys do way more than just deliver. We even carry a wide variety of pre-owned vehicles. To keep you going, our parts, service department, and body shop can accommodate our brands and others. Call us today at 322-1722 or email info at bahamasbus.com. On your mark, set, go for it, go. It's your chance to cheer from here, Bahamas. Scotiabank is the regional banking partner for the 2023 Carifta Games. We invite everyone to come watch our young athletes perform at their best. Every Scotiabank MasterCard credit card holder gets fast track into the stadium. Just show your card with your ticket at the Southern Gate. Plus, check us in the Cultural Village at the Scotiabank Kiosk where you can win amazing prizes. Scotiabank, proud sponsor of the 2023 Oak Tree Medical Center Carifta Games. Foundation. Foundation. The 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 foundation. And we are back, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant in your company, a Wednesday here on The Foundation, just chopping it down, the lines are wide open, if you want to be a part of the conversation, 323-6232, 325-4316, or hit me up on the text, 422-4796, let me see if I can read one or two of these texts, this is Howard, you mentioned going to the beach, this morning I went uh, to Jaws Beach, which is near my home. The place is overrun with garbage. Nasty people piling up chicken boxes, cases of beer, was truly sickening. Yet all you hear is how proud we is. Definitely. Definitely. A diluted people. So we can be able to talk about these particular things. I'm... Um, we could be able to, to do this. Uh, the lines are open if you want to be able to do that. Papa call back. Papa calls me and says to me that he can't get through on the line, man. He has a 677 number, and he's been trying to get through on the line for a long, 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 long time. So Papa call back on this phone right here. All right, here we go. Say good afternoon to people, Papa. Papa. Howard. Hey. Happy Easter, too. Yeah, man, same to you. Yeah, Howard, what I wanted to say, right, it being so long now, it's missing, I don't know if it's over three months since the problem started there at the Guardian, and it's a lot of us, I, I, I'm just calling for me, but I, I'm speaking on behalf of all of the callers, them who might be aware that they, every time they try to call in, they either get hung up or whatsoever, I don't think it's the radio stations, but I'm not really sure who falls to this, 
All I'm saying that there's so many of us around the Bahamas and around the world, we cannot call in to the talk show. We can't call in to Dwight's good show in the morning times here in Green or Howard or Naughty or Chicago Line. People might say, well, I haven't heard this one for a little while, but I wish they could get that problem sorted out, man. Us who get the 6 7, the cable Bahamas number, mm-hmm. and that's enough, then we can't get in. If you get a BTC number, cell line, or whatever, you get in. The, I don't know if you're familiar, if you're aware, check the same regular call us, them. Well, you know, I'm one of them, but you haven't mm-hmm. heard from me for a long time. Yeah, I hear from you in a while. Can, but if you all can get that problem sorted, we really appreciate it. Now, with one last thing, um, um, you say, the, the guy tells you, say, we got to. Mom, we gotta do. We got. We gotta get Doctor Minutes back in there, Mom. We gotta Doctor Minutes. <laughs> and I laugh when you say that, Howard. I believe the Bahamas laugh when we oh. say. Hey, you know, we drop on that one. We say that's bananas. That's crazy. You gotta be bananas. <laughs> 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 so we gotta get Doctor Minutes. Got to be bananas. You gotta be crazy, right? So. And the thing about it, they're so serious with the these, these people. Be so serious. Say, man, this is the Easter season, man. You gotta just the lens season. <laughs> How much lens season we gone through we under the last administration? We will forget, but we will not forget. But Howard, thanks for taking the call. I can let some other callers come in. But you all see, you all get the problem solved. Yeah, man, man, I can tell Dwight to be able to. Talk to talk so much good topics. The mom is a patient place when you do the Thursday thing. We can't even call in. We got to oh, send a text in or something. We still can text, but we want to hear our voice on the radio just like everyone else, man. You know, the Guardian Station get one of the best radio stations. I mean, what? The, the best. best. Talk to, me. Talk, to me. Host host Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Thank you, my Papa. I can put it before Dwight. I know he's listening, so we can be able to rectify that as thank soon as possible. I appreciate it. Guys, thank you so very kindly. Let me take a next telephone call. Call you on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hello. Hey, good morning. How you doing, sir? Hey, Harry. Can you hear me? Yeah, man, I can hear you. Go ahead. So I'm far season back of there. No, no, I'm I right agree. here. I agree, little Papa, yeah. Um, you know, I read there's a new company coming over to telecommunication. Probably need to have them come on your show. You see Starlink? Yeah, I wonder if they, well, what is Starlink? They say it's owned by Leon Musk. I don't know how true it is. Elon Musk, a high-speed satellite Musk, internet yeah. system. Uh, let me read a little piece of it. High-speed satellite internet system Starlink has been licensed by IRCA, and uh, according to the regulations recently published in public register uh, of the licenses document, the internet provider is an internet provider, is registered under Starlink Service Bahamas Limited, according to the document. And the company was licensed since the middle of February 2023. So we're going to talk more about that. I'd love to, to have uh, representatives to be able to talk right, about it. Right, but Yeah. But let me ask you a question here during the corona, and I also ask this question. I'm, I'm well, first of all, let me just make sure I'm a PRP supporter. I support Brave Davis and his government. Okay. I have to. I'm a part of majority rule. My dad's mm-hmm. a part of majority rule, if you know my people there. But the question is, though, as we, we, as we have a right to cross the floor, calling the Constitution, we could cross the floor. Yeah. But as crossing the floor, you rather, during that time, as during the corona, Dr. Minnes, who, who happens to be a medical doctor, and also the Prime Minister being in charge. I just wonder, Dr. Minister being in charge of Bray Davis, what would a Bray Davis government, the Dr. Minister's government, do differently? And that's the question we need to ask. Well, because during the corona, okay. a lot of countries' government messed up. Okay. You think our one messed up? Um, I think everyone suffered loss. In one way or the other, and I mm-hmm. think everyone's economy and the rhythm of their their right. community has been disrupted. Yeah, but I don't right. I don't know if I could attribute that to the government messing up. I think all governments globally has done everything they can possibly do right to ensure so that you, they keep well, the safety that, of their, that's their my question. citizens. That's my question. You do a show on there because do you think will be who 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 will be better in charge as if you make comparisons? The, the, the majority the prime, of decisions what, what that my prime minister do different. The, the majority of decisions that were made during uh-huh. that time were not made specifically and strategically by our government. It was based upon uh, international. an international position. W-H-O. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. This is what uh-huh. one of the only decisions that our government has made is, is as it relates to being able to keep the citizens uh-huh. safe. It's shutting down. But this but is exactly that. What goes yeah. that? Did, so, so I don't think no other government could do it differently. We've been in Dr. Minute for the lockdown then. 
No, 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 I can't blame him for the lockdown. I'm actually, I told, I told it out there. No, I, I can't blame him for the lockdown. I blame him for his inactive approach of understanding that this culture and this community. Okay, right. let's 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 take Doctor. Let's take um, um uh, Governor Cuomo when he was in New York. You remember the Governor Cuomo, right? Of course, of course. Okay, so Governor Cuomo made a decision to ensure that New Yorkers found their way. You know, a lot of people died in New York. Let's not let's not p- pretend with that. Right. But he engaged labs to identify how we could rectify this problem locally. And they made decisions based upon the culture and the environment that existed in the space in New York. Right. We haven't done that. We had a specific culture, a unique culture of people that engaged in a particular way. And beyond that, it wasn't just for the majority of us here in Nassau, we were all locked down. But these fellas was over here in Harbor Island jamming all night. Talk to me. So ah, well, they was in, so, in, in Eleuthera jamming. They was in Abaco right. jamming. And so right? that's why I throw it out there because um, if I act like I throw it out to you because, because you are you are a history man like me. So the people, so, so, so it's safe to say that Howard, as a bunk leader, Dr. Minute was a hypocrite to the people. I think it's safe because to say I that. Wanna, you, got, you, got, you got the Albany party and you got the people down in Bimini And then party they buried and, a dog. Yeah, I think it's safe and, to say And that. everybody party and he had was locked down and he, and, he, and he charged the man for going to water for his grandmother. Right. To the pub. Right. So you think Dr. Minute deserved Do you think he for them to put him back? Well, that's a choice that the F and M has to make. I know, but I, 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 I say I told it out there. Like I said, I told it out there. But, but yeah, that's like I said, that's a choice that the free national movement has to make mm-hmm. internally within their council to identify the strength. So we need our daughter grad. It might have been uh, dead, as from a faculty perspective, it's a joke of not separating himself from Doctor Minutes. I couldn't say that. Or, or, or Doctor Sands. I couldn't my say that. My good doctor. He's not my doctor personally, but I call him my doctor because he he was hot. You got to deal with me if I have a heart problem. So it's going to be a little easy on him. Do you, but you think he uh, put himself in the wrong shoe? I couldn't say that. I, let me tell I you I know why. you couldn't say that. No, no, no. no. Me, me, like, me, I, I got to give you the historical, um, um, I got to give you the preferences that is in my mind that popped up instantaneously. Uh-huh. When Bill Clinton did everything that he did in the White House, I did not have sexual relations with that woman as it relates to Monica Lewinsky. Uh, and, and, and Hillary Clinton stayed with him. It propelled yeah. her to a particular position, didn't come out of the circle of the White House, but still propelled her to a point later in the future. When uh, both Hubert Ingram and Perry Christie were fired right. from the PLP and Hubert Ingram found his own way, they opened up a, a paper, he agitated, uh, did everything he could possibly do, and found himself at the helm of the Free National Movement, right, Perry Christie much. went back to the party. Right. A lot of people say he'd gone back, swimming through his vomit, proverbial right. vomit, to get right. back to the party. But he became the prime minister of this country. So right. sometimes you have to endure for the greater objective but still carry your convictions. So it's very hard. It's, it's a hard thing in our society. But if you have an objective, you need to have proximity. You need to but, be seen, and you need to continue to be able to work at those but things. But Dr. Mitch might creep back in as prime minister of the country. He may, but I'm just saying, as it relates to Michael Pintard leaving his cabinet, I don't think that that was the best look for him if he had greater aspirations in the future. Well, my, 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 my Michael Pintard uh, is, is a different story that... that that need to be that he did to rectify himself because he sat in the cabinet, and every day he challenged the government on he nobody because he sat there. That's why I break them with government. My government laugh at him because I watch Parliament all the time. I love the parliamentary channel, and every time you see Michael raise an issue, it's issue that he raised in the past that he know. Yeah, but see, we ain't playing. We ain't, we ain't playing. Let's 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 use basketball terms. We ain't playing one on one. No, if this is press. There's a certain position I have to be in to ensure that we can collectively hit the point. If right. I decide to be able to, so no matter if you laugh at one man, if he decides to be able to run the press, run a specific play, the objective is for a uh, minister to hit the layup, you have to run this play according to plan. Right. And so you have to do what you have to do. I ain't got no coach to run that. You need a coach. <laughs> Let me go, man. Let me go. I can talk to you. I'm happy. Let me talk more. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate okay, you. Thank you. Call. Thank you all so much. Guys, let's take a quick commercial break. Get to news. And be right back after this. It is 96.9 FM Radio, Guardian Radio, Howard Grant. 
Uh, we're going to lean back today. And we're going to engage you about some real social issues. We're going to talk about forgiveness. Have you forgiven some people? Do you carry that? Listen to me. I, I, it was at one point I didn't forgive somebody. I had a knot in my belly. I said, oh, Lord, this don't feel right. I had to release some things, man. Let's talk about these things. The knot wasn't there with Hubert Ingram. I mean, Hubert Minnis. Praise Jesus. Let's talk about these things. We're going to be right back after the news right here. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. Is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. My mommy made sure that I was vaccinated because she loves me. Getting our precious little ones vaccinated protects them from so many diseases like polio, measles, and whooping cough. Vaccines are safe and effective. Immunizations can prevent illnesses and even death. Take advantage of the National Vaccination Catch-Up Campaign from March 25th to April 6th. Visit your nearest clinic weekdays, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturday, March 25th, visit us at the Red Cross from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And on Saturday, April 1st, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Mall at Marathon. COVID-19 vaccines are also available at all locations. This message is brought to you by PAHO WHO, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and USAID. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Guardian Radio and the Foundation are on the move. Bahamas, this one's for you. SBT, Small Business Thursdays. Every Thursday, the Foundation with Howard Grant will highlight small businesses throughout the country, far and wide. Your products, services, prices, and personality. We want to hear it all. Get your 30 or 60 second advertisement heard on air at a fraction of the cost. We here at the Foundation understand the times and don't want you to be left behind. With Guardian Radio, you reach your specific demographic and it is unmatched. We reach thousands daily. Get your products off the shelf and your services in their hearts. Small Business Thursdays with the Foundation only on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. For more information, call 302-2300 or the Help Me Howard line at 827-0111. SBT. Small Business Thursdays. Get your business moving today. At Bahamas Bus and Truck Company Limited, we provide vehicles known for quality and durability. From the iconic Jeep Wrangler to the award-winning Grand Cherokee, we've got your everyday driver covered. For larger tasks, our Ram 1500, Mitsubishi Fuso Canter Trucks, CMC Verica Vans, and Fuso Rosa Jitneys do way more than just deliver. We even carry a wide variety of pre-owned vehicles. To keep you going, our parts, service department, and body shop can accommodate our brands and others. Call us today at 322-1722 or email info at bahamasbus.com. Foundation. Found foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Found foundation. Found foundation. Found foundation. Found foundation. Found foundation. Found foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant in your company, the foundation on this beautiful Wednesday right here in Holy Week, trying to take it easy. Uh, we're just trying to trying to be as decent as possible in this week, right? We're trying to, um, uh, you know, be rowdy 
and roll up anything. It's more about this kind of a somber position and inflection and understanding our position in terms of being able to move forward in this country. Where are we as a people? Right? That's, at least that's what's on my mind. I mean, I'm not going to fight you. The lines are wide open. If you want to have a conversation with me, please do so. Hit me up, 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259, or uh, hit me on the text, 422-4796. So um, the second page of the Nassau Guardian talks about Trump's day in court as a criminal defendant. What to know? So it gives you the sort of a highlight, right, uh, subsection, so you can be able to understand exactly what's what, which is peculiar. Today is Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. Watch me. Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. Let me read a couple of these highlights. So it says, hush money payment related to the 2016 election. Donald Trump defendant. Donald Trump's, uh, Trump's response outside of courts. The warning and potential consequences and mixed political impacts that he'd have. And um, uh, the, the brag speaks briefly, right? So these are some of the highlights that are here, right? Now, this is in The Guardian. And then you pick up the, the, the Tribune. Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, police question ex-Prime Minister Minnis. Investigation into last administration's food program confirmed. I mean, did the Simpson write this episode? Did the Simpsons write this? This is wild. What is going on here? We often say that our former Prime Minister, Dr. Minnis, seeks to emulate everything almost play by play of what he even his posture and position his tone right the condescendence that's sharp that continues to be able to slice through the media right we've we've said over time that dr minnis emulated everything and continues to do so what he's seen donald trump do and then you look in the paper today on the same day <laughs> this is wild i mean i just i I mean, I don't want to break it down further than that. I, is this just consequence? I'm sorry, is this just some, uh, like, happenstance? Does this just happen? Is this coincidence that these particular things happen? Or do you think that there is a greater design to cause us to look at this and make a determination? I mean, I'm... I'm I'm really not in the headspace to have a conversation about the possibility of the former prime minister returning at the, the helm of uh, leadership in this country. I'm really not, I'm not prepared to have that kind of a conversation. Not now, but I have to rally my, myself and really be able to get to that if it comes down to that because it seems as though these people are adamant about bringing him back and being able to propel him at the forefront of the organization, uh, the free national movement, that ain't my business. I'm just saying, we have to deal with the consequences out here in the open, in the wider society. There could be no expectations that he'll be different. You remember when former Prime Minister uh, Perry Christie in 2000, 2011, was it 2011? 2011 when he started to make his rounds, um, his campaign rounds, to say what the PLP would do. And the former prime minister, um, Perry Christie, who I love, I think he is the absolute best. Not necessarily from a policy standpoint, but there's another element that I believe that he brought to the very forefront to show the sort of transparency and articulation of a prime minister, his posture and demeanor. I thought he was, I thought he was marvelous. I must say, I, I can't ever tell you no lie. I, I really did. And um, when he would say, well, you know, forgive me. I promise the next time I will do better. That's what he said. I believed him. And he didn't. Am I to believe? No, I can't beat the man, beat uh, Minnis with anybody else's switch. But the nature of politics in this country, the question is, am I to believe these men who've already tasted the nectar of power? They got a charge in their cerebral cortex, deep down in their frontal lobe. They desire this relentlessly focused, can't sleep, 
nocturnal as a result of their desire to be able to sup at the table of all power. Should I believe him? Should I believe him when he says these particular things? Let me read a little piece of the article. This is from uh, the Tribune. And so he says that, uh, Dr. Minister said that I was not disturbed at all. They asked him a question, how he felt about being interviewed by the police. He says, I was not disturbed at all because I knew that throughout my governance, I was very transparent and honest with the Bahamian people. And if we face a similar disaster, watch me now. He didn't slip into the future. He need to stop it right now. Watch him. If we face a similar disaster, I will ensure again, you need to stop it. That the Bahamian people receive the necessary tools and equipment for their survival. What is going on? That's definitely not a holy week. Uh, alto, the frequency went too high. It went up about three octaves. It's too much. Let's take a telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Go ahead, call you on the line. Hello, can you hear me? Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Go ahead. I'm shouting at you, Sparky. You look very, very faint down in the back of the back. You, you can hear me good. Eh? You can hear me good? I'm hearing you now. Now okay, I can hear you. Go ahead. I'm going to have to do it to you, sir. What's happening, Sparky? You all as well? Yeah, I hope I'm begging for too much time today. <laughs> no spot. But you see, I sneak one in on you yesterday. Yeah, you did. You, you, it was a good one. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, right, I, I, had to, I, had to, I had to organize that one to get you. <laughs> <Go> <laughs> you ahead. let that one sell up for me. You had me laughing all day. Go ahead, Sparky. Yeah, you had me yeah, You know how you know, you know, people call me, but that's slick more. That was a good move. That was a good move. <laughs> yeah, but Tommy didn't give you no 30 seconds. But it, anyway, you know, when I heard you mention this morning, I had a rough night last night. I, you know, I, I'm still home suffering with a broken arm. Oh, my God. But Mark. broken hand, really. Broken hand. But last night was very painful. I hardly slept. But when I heard you mention Mr. Minutes coming back today, I really, I, I mean, my eyes are wide open now. I can't sleep again. Hmm. I'm scared of a bad dream. <laughs> but thinking of what that gentleman was talking about, Mr. Minutes coming back. I remember the last election. Howard, I was all the way. I grew up in the valley. I was voting PLP before Mr. Perry Christie went in the House of Assembly mm -hmm. in 1977. I was voting PLP. All my life was voting PLP. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, but I was never active in politics like I was in 21. Mm -hmm. I would just go to one of those type of places... Although knowing that most people in the valley was PLPs, mm -hmm. because of Perry Chris and anybody else who ran for the valley was PLP. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a no no. That was a no. So all my life I would just go to vote and then go back to work, or go to vote and then go off for the rest of the day to work. Mm -hmm. But last election, what was going on in this country? I remember meeting Mr. Brave Davis one Sunday up by a watering hole. We just round the pool having a few from jokes with some friends, mm -hmm. and I went to Mr. Davis, I said, Mr. Davis, I could jump on WhatsApp, and I got it all out for you. Mm -hmm. He said, thank you very much, Sparky. I, I got it all out. And everybody knew that Sparky became a popular person in town around the last election on that WhatsApp and that goblin to run Mr. Minnis out of Bay Street. I became like a celebrity every place I went. But Sparky, this Sparky, don't stop, don't stop. And I tell you the truth, to so imagine that man coming back again, mm. I would love to move to an out island and don't never go to Poland, never vote again in my life. Just to imagine that man. Mm. At my age, what I went through during that time, when it was a, a, a it was a time when we were so scared, I was scared sometimes to come out of my gate to go across to the neighbor. We was like talking across the road from one another mm -hmm. with masks on. Mm. This country was in fear. The, the, the amount of people we get was here. We were here dying every day. You remember the first lady that came from Bimini where they say she was the first case? Yeah, I, I, and she died. Uh, you know, I remember, let me, let, 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 let me do what I remember. I remember um, Dr. San starting to talk about this tube, right? Uh, they would put you in a tube 
and they bring you over. Just sort of a little something, right? Put you in that and bring you over. And come look at the Chinese too. It's almost like a Chinese 4X, but just really a medium. Talk to me. And so you look at it, right? And I'm saying to myself, well, big people can't fit in this. We can die. What so what, 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 what gonna happen if I got to go somewhere? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, right here, right here. Go ahead. I, I remember that day. I remember that day when we, we, we were hearing about it internationally. And everybody was saying, we heard it reached America. Then we heard it reached Florida. And then people started saying, oh, Jesus, if it reached Florida, you know what happens when America gets the cold. Yeah, right here. We got the flu. And then the, that plane, and, I think it was two to Bahamas three days Air. later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, bam, the first case hit Bimini. Yeah. No, no, no. Then we heard she died. Bahamas then Air had a whole death. flight full. I think then, it was Bahamas Air. Right Air. after that, we heard um, um, Dr. Justin Enius at Doctor's Hospital. He died. Yeah, yeah. Then we heard, then, but then we heard Bismarck Oakley, um, brother Stanford. He died. I know, I know, uh, a noted surveyor and an and a architect. Ministry now, of Works. Now, Sparky, I won't keep you on, po- on point. I can't say that this is Menace's fault. Menace didn't kill the people. No, no, no. And no, they no, ain't no, bring no. on the pandemic. No, 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 no. Okay. But, but, the, but, the, but the rules that they put down is almost like he became an instant dictator overnight. Mm-hmm. It's like we rushing him at 5 o'clock in the evening, barricades all over the police, with barricades, every corner you take, barricades here. Police with with or with, with sort of shotgun and now AK 47s and you rush into pass to get over the curfew this and the people getting arrested for selling peanuts without license. My people God. getting arrested for selling coconut water. A little boy going up the, the road to the pump to get some water. The, the baby uncle who's sick home getting a lock up. Hey, what's going on in the Bahamas? Wow. Well, it was a global issue, Sparky. So you can't throw the whole thing on the man's shoulders. But he didn't manage it the way that he was supposed to be able to manage it. Sparky, Sparky, go on. Okay, I ain't gonna fight you, right? He didn't manage it the way that we assumed. With our creativity, with our culture, with who we are as a people, I think some things could have been done a little different. I think some things could have been done a little different. I think they could have also been a little proactive in bringing in... Um, um, the harbors was you know empty. They could have bring in a ship. Uh, as a hospital because they started to talk about this capacity issue and stuff like that. So I think that some things could have been done better, right? And I don't think that there should have been this heavy dependency on external uh, NGOs such as Israel Aid or such as Samaritan's Purse to be able to assist us in this capacity. I thought by the first wave, by this first position, the next year we did the exact same thing. I thought it was crazy. I said, these people don't learn from anything. Is there an expectation that instantly we'll be the same place? They don't learn from anything. And um, uh, I just thought that was poor or for me. I looked at it and I said, this is poor management. And I think they can do better. Let me take a next telephone call. Caller, you on the line with us live. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Howard, that's me? Yeah, go ahead. How would they fix the problem? See that? God is so good. God is good. How would they fix the problem? You mean we had... Oh, we could have undo that a long time. You could have answered them. I mean, you could have me live on the phone and talk about they've been working on it a long time. Don't fight them. checking on it a long time, eh? You got it. You got it. Praise yeah, God. Yeah, thank God for that. Talk to me. Yeah, everybody could have. Oh, one last thing before I hang up and finish listening to you. I understand either the government or the Ministry of Education or uh, was considering or, or, or already implemented a policy where they would start searching the preschool and the primary school students I saw the papers like, today. I think uh, lately it was reported on the news. Either students was fine with some ammunition or bullets in his Ooh. in his school bag, Let's and see. I say that to say this, Howard. Mm-hmm. If we should, if we, if this policy should go on now, and I don't know if it's just government schools or if they can do it in the private school too. Um, maybe they need to consider that. If, if we do it, Howard, and God forbid, God forbid, um, Howard's son or Howard's daughter. They find some contraband or something illegal. How you go about this? The parents must be all responsible. You think they saw that one? I hang up and listen hours. I appreciate your telephone call. Um, um, I don't know what the procedure would be, but if you were to find any contraband in these students, you have to be able to get, uh, even before you can question them, even before you can take them to the station, there has to be a guardian. There has to be a parent uh, to accompany them because minors can't answer for themselves in this particular capacity. And so you'd have to take those kind of a kitty gloves to be able to deal with this issue. Nonetheless, right? you're not going to just throw them in, in um, um, you know, reform school and all these particular things, but there has to be a course 
that it's taken to be able to deal with these things. And I think it's, uh, you know, I saw Belinda uh, in her particular capacity as BUT president talk about these things. But I thought that this and other issues as it relates to rectifying what's happening on the ground socially day to day, that what we're dealing with, those issues need to be rectified. I think uh, there needs to be a significant push and partnering with social services, whether it be the men's desk, whether it be the women's desk, all of these particular arms to be able to ensure that we can provide opportunity for these children to see uh, some example of a mature man, a mature woman, a responsible man, a social responsible, socially responsible woman in our society and really be able to craft the type of programs that they won't necessarily be encouraged to ingest the violence that they see uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's just my, my, my thought along those lines. Let me take a next telephone call. Call on the line. Go ahead. Go ahead, call you on the line. Hello? No? Give me a call. 323-623-2325-4316. 325-4259. Anywhere from the, tech, uh, from the family of violence. Oh, I'm sorry. Any text. 4224796. Let me read a few of these. It says... Uh, Howard. Oh, this is a, does it come through? Turn on your phone for me. Turn on your, uh, go ahead. Turn on your stuff. Yeah. Hello? You're on live with us, cuz. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Thought they, thought they were reading some text. Um, to your point, Howard, I, though we're going through this, uh, um, Easter season, I, I would advise Dr. Minister to go to church to seek forgiveness in church. Yes, I wouldn't be forgiving him. <laughs> me personally. I oh, you need to stop it. You I, must be choking. I have no uh, forgiveness for him. You got to loosen None. just a little bit. Not too tight. Well, just loosen a little bit. Loosen a little bit. And, and, and just to advise uh, those few people who feel they can vote in the leadership of this country through their vote and their party. If they know what's good for them, they will have a, a discussion amongst themselves, amongst themselves to consider or reconsider if they have any thought of bringing him back as their leader for election. I will sit out again. My God. As an FNM. Mm. And he would not get my vote. Mm. And I'm sorry. And I, I don't vote. We don't vote for MPs in this country. We vote for, for, for body. Mm. All right? Now, the topic of, of I think, uh, you know, I think they had the headline with gender, transgender in the high schools, eh? Well, uh, no, no. Um, Belinda Wilson, in her capacity, she just kind of threw mm -hmm. it out there on the sideline when she went over to ro uh, a Rotarian ask the question. So it wasn't really a headline, but I picked it up and I really wanted to have a conversation about it. I, I, yeah, I didn't like the headline. Yeah. I didn't like that headline. After listening to her, I really didn't like that headline. I think in this country, we kind of, uh, you know, we shut things down really quickly. Yeah. And we don't allow for conversation, man. And, you know, when, you be, when you're a part of, of an international community and you want to trade, you want to be able to be educated in those people's country, um, you know, and their country is more diverse and more advanced than mm -hmm. ours, you know. And when we hit our time, call on them for assistance and, you know, to come and bail us out, you know, they're, 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 we're not asking for, for, to be, for them to, to put those particular um, behaviors and whatever in because we, if we don't stand for those particular things. But we as a nation have to understand that, you know, there are a diverse and different set of people that operate in this world. And, you know, I have a in going to college of Riga, mm -hmm. and she called me one day, and she was like, Daddy, I see um, two uh, guys brought their kid to school. And, man, what you think? I say, hey, I stop in the tracks. I say, hey, there are different groupings of people that exist, and you must respect that, eh? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not telling you to, to, to uh, you know, to, to, to accept it, but you know, you got to know how to behave, how to to, to act when you in their country because it's acceptable in there. You, you're looking yeah. for the word tolerate. 
to- not tolerate, okay, not tolerate, talk to me. but respect, okay. to, to understand. Because okay. people, people don't, talk, people, that's like saying people tolerate black people in this their country. But you, we, we, everybody is looking for to be recognized, to be respected, to be accepted, right? And mm-hmm. that's how, that's the diverse nature of America. Mm-hmm. You can't expect for America to build a one billion dollar. You expect these people to build a billion dollar embassy in their country. One billion dollar embassy in your country. Right? The tourists coming here, the investors coming here, buying up your kids, building big hotels, providing you an employment. Right? I'm not telling you to accept the lifestyle, but when the when the when the guy come here with his his his, his husband and his kid or the female come with her wife and a kid and the briefcase full of money to open up a business you can't have your hand on the briefcase and tell them, and another, and another hand saying, "Hey, we don't we don't want that round here," but mm. you want the briefcase full of money, Alan. Mm. That don't work. And that's where I think the education comes in um, play. When you can say, "Hey, um, as a young as young people in your country, understand that in this world we live in today, as you watch TV, as you be on your iPad, but there are different groupings of people." Mm-hmm. And not like us. Mm-hmm. We don't subscribe to that. But when you get in their country, or if you you encounter them, don't stare, don't <laughs> you know, don't uh, bash them, mm-hmm. because certain things is not accepted in the country. Mm-hmm. But your callers made an interesting point. You don't have to accept their money, you know. You don't have to accept their way of life on or nothing, you know. You could stay going to the, to- the outside toilet and pumping water. Mm. You know, that's places like Iraq and Iran and things. They ain't want nothing to do with the Western world for some reason. They ain't mm-hmm. accepting it. They don't want nothing from you. Places like they don't want nothing from you mm-hmm. because they have their values and their morals. But you can't have your hand on the briefcase and then you say, hey, but you keep that over here. Mm-hmm. You want to be in this world and you want to operate, then know that the man come in with his alternate family mm-hmm. or the person want to express themselves differently. Wow. And I think that's what the Wilson was trying to say. She was trying to say, and I wouldn't have used the word transgender. I would have used the word gender identity. Yeah. I you think, it, yeah, you make a good point. Maybe in the wording, some yeah. people get lost in the sauce. They lost themselves in the wording and the yeah. approach of those particular things. But I accept what you're saying, my brother. I thank you for your telephone Okay, call. man. Thank you so very kindly, guys. Please give me a call. Let me see if I can recover these texts. This is Howard. The nation is angry because it has no leadership or direction in church, in government, and in our communities. This one's posing, the, I'm sorry, the ones posing as leaders or in those chairs demonstrate only oppression to change which is inevitable in all spheres. Would your kid be happy if all day you let the house fall apart, don't protect him or her, and tell everyone you're doing a great job? It's a text that came through. Uh, it says, good afternoon, Howard. Question for you. What is the right, what is right about the LGB, I suppose that LGBTQ or being gay? Now, when you give me the answer for that, we can have this conversation. I know sin is sin, male and female, both different, uh, both different organs. To be honest, if people accepted that lifestyle as a part of our society, something must be terribly wrong. Our godly beliefs is in trouble. And that is what keeps us grounded. It says, yo, Howard, what's up? Right? Okay, I like this. Right? So, yo, Howard, what's up? It says, I don't think that there is a spiritual side, period. But clearly, you do. And that's fine. But we forget many times in this subject that it is, one, it is literally impossible to truly forgive if you cannot really forget, like Alzheimer's, okay? And that's important because, two, arguably only one of the most important biological, genetic, and evolutionary higher level abilities of a human is adaption to stresses. It's what keeps us alive. When our animal and humanoids die out. And it's what's helped us learn to interact with others in a way that won't continuously harm us in some way. That's a text that came through. Uh, let me see if I can read another one. It says, please. 
just want to send about a, a million of these. As usual, could you please tell the public to the coming holiday, don't drink and drive. I prefer the public not to even drink, uh, much less drink at all, much less drive. Um, let's talk about that. I think uh, that beautiful young lady, the uh, text went around, right? The 19-year-old that lost her life on East Bay Street. I looked at the car and I said, oh my God, what was she making the whole dashboard? I'm, look, I'm looking at the car, right? And I'm, I'm looking at it. You know, you can't look at these things too long. I don't want to ingest the entire thing, but I'm looking at it. And I said, is that the wheel by the driver's side? This is wild. What's going on? So I'm looking at that and she lost her life. We all heard the story a few days back about the young lady that passed away. She lost her life. Um, um, colliding with a tree out there on East Bay Street. And it's a cautionary tale that we always tell. Often we hear these tales um, uh, along that dark road, Queens Highway, leading up to um, uh, Crown Haven, leading up to Cooperstown, out there in Abaco. We often hear those conversations. We often hear the conversation about death and loss um, um, from Eleuthera. You know, persons get inebriated in the evening, driving along these dark roads and lose their life. But it, it's peculiar, it, you know, it, it touches home when it's right here in the city because I keep questioning myself, where do you all have time to speed in Nassau? It's crazy. Like, my truck has not gone beyond 55 miles an hour here in the city. It may seem fast, but it is, has not gone. Even if it drive out in JFK, I try to take my time just to be able to take in the scenery. And maybe it's my age, you know, maybe as a younger Howard, I would have been able to be speeding up and down all over the place. But I got my kids in there, I got my wife in there, this is a family vehicle, we can't speed, we just got to take our time. And plus we're having conversations, I'm just trying to figure out why you're speeding. Just calm down. Why are you speeding? So let's talk about those things, guys, please. Over the weekend, we want you to, if you must drink, do so responsibly. If you're going to be able to enjoy one or two beverages uh, with loved ones and whatnot, do so responsibly. And uh, it's not an American thing to identify someone as a designated driver or have a, you know, have a few drinks in a neutral location. You got to be able to do that. You got to do that. And find yourselves in this kind of position that you could make it to next week, Tuesday. We don't need to hear you all splattered all over the place and hear these stories about love and, and life and, oh, this one, man, I just see Charlie, man, Charlie was such a good man. Oh, God, but he liked the drink. Oh, God, I don't know what make him. These are stories that we hear in our society. So please, whatever you're doing this weekend, do so responsibly. And do so with a, like, sort of a sober mind. You understand? Wine is for mockers and strong drink is raging. So let's just talk about that. 323-6232, Hit me up on the text line, 422-4796. Uh, we can be able to chop down these conversations. So let me see if we can read another one. So this is Howard. Hello. Despite political, corporate, and media agenda, most Americans don't support uh, most of the policies that are being pushed on the world. I work at the hotel industry, and they continue to openly share their views. Um, I think it's more of a liberal view. Republicans are very strong, especially those from the Bible Belt. They're very strong about their opinions as it relates to these things. It says, I feel that Dr. Minnis did the very best that he could. With the hands, he was unfortunately dealt. I'm sure that's cards, but you said hands. So we're going to read it like this. With the hands, which is his hands. <laughs> I, I can't even laugh. I guess. <laughs> he was dealt his own hands, right? He did the very best that he could with the hands that he was dealt, that uh, he was unfortunately dealt. No, uh, no one knows how the PLP would have dealt with the devastating blows that we had. I believe that they would have done the exact same thing. I think that we take our cue from what's happening externally. They take our cue from what's happening in America, and then we try to uh, manipulate and try to kind of craft it to fit here locally. So I believe that that's what it happened. Says he managed the pandemic well and did what many were too afraid to do. What he did in what he what he put in place, though it took time, it manifested and brought us to a place where we could survive. My five cents, many will stand on the side and chat. What we each have done is where 
if it were us in this particular position. Okay, Howard, one of the dumbest things that Dr. Minnis, the incompetent authority, did was shut down the beach for everyone. Maybe no beach parties or picnics, but the salt water would have helped plenty COVID victims. Um, that was an argument that we had in the thick of the thing. Let's take a telephone call. Call you on the line with us live. Go ahead. You left three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Hit me up on the text four two two four seven nine six. Good day. Random question: um, Do you happen to know the breakdown of the increased GDP numbers and how much of it stays in the country and actually builds up our nation? At the 50-year mark, I talked about being able to have a, a socioeconomic conversation with Gowan Bo, and he made a commitment that he would be able to come on. Last time, he was able to just kind of touch on fidelity. So tell you what, let's see if we can have that conversation next week, God's Spirit, if he's available to be able to dive into these things and chop it down accordingly, right? It says, um, good day, please correct some of your callers while... agree, well, I suppose this is I, while I may not agree with Mr. Minnis lockdown, many have been uncomfortable that the arrest of persons and lack of order in relation to those islands that were doing their own thing rest with the police. We have a lot of laws, but no enforcement. The police could have shown compassion or just common sense. This is a strong one when dealing with the young man rather than locking him up. I don't think common sense is a command. I think for the majority of the force, they respond to commands um, because I thought it was peculiar. Uh, I was working right here on rush hour, driving to the station. Only me, one in my car. I told you this before. I thought it was wild. I'm driving in my car, coming to the station, and police stopped me at the barricade, so I stopped. Right? He said, put your window down. My window's up. Only me, one in the car. I got my mask on the right, on the, on the passenger seat, you know, in preparation to come into the show. So he put the window, he said, put the window down, right? Now he have on this, this mask. We already understand this is not the N95 mask. All sorts of particles coming through the thing. So he put, I put the window down. He says, uh, why your mask isn't on? So I looked around and I said, sir, is only me, one in the car? He said, yeah, but you're breathing on me right now. So I said, I said what? This is what, sir? And then I stopped because I was about to explain to him, you stop me and tell me, put my window down. And I said, you know what? I can't argue with this guy. I said, okay, sorry, sir. I put my mask on and I drive away. But I, it rattled my brain that a command could take him to the point of n rejecting common sense entirely. Entirely. And we see that too often on the force. We see that too often on the force. All right? Let me see if I can read one more and then take a commercial break. Okay, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Take the commercial break. We'll take the commercial break and get right back. The producer only here, commercial break. He shut it off. 96.9 FM, guys. You can take the quick commercial break and be right back after this. Ready to step into the future? From your front door to the backyard and everywhere in between. See and speak to whoever's there with ring video doorbells and security cameras now available at Alive. Protect with matters most, all from one easy app. Available in your Google or Apple Play Store. Visit bealive.com slash ring to learn more. We are Alive. As a parent and pediatrician, I know how important it is to keep our little ones up to date with their childhood immunizations. When your little ones are immunized, they have protection against diseases like measles, whooping cough, and polio, which has a treatment or cure. When the immunized child is exposed to the germs that cause these diseases, their immune system is prepared to fight immediately, preventing sickness and even death. Parents have been doing this for years to protect their children. Now it's your turn to keep your little ones safe. Take advantage of the National Vaccination Catch-Up Campaign, March 25th to April 6th. Visit your nearest clinic weekdays between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. 
on Saturday, March 25th. Visit us at the Red Cross, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And on Saturday, April 1st, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we'll be at the Mall at Marathon. COVID-19 vaccines are also available at all locations. This message is brought to you by Paco WHO, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and USA. On your mark, set, go for it, go. It's your chance to cheer from here, Bahamas. Scotiabank is the regional banking partner for the 2023 Carifta Games. We invite everyone to come watch our young athletes perform at their best. Every Scotiabank MasterCard credit card holder gets fast track into the stadium. Just show your card with your ticket at the Southern Gate. Plus, check us in the Cultural Village at the Scotiabank Kiosk, where you can win amazing prizes. Scotiabank, proud sponsor of the 2023 Oak Tree Medical Center Carifta Games. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Foundation. Foundation. And we are back, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant in your company here in the Foundation on this Wednesday. We're just chopping it down. The lines are wide open if you want to be a part of the conversation before we get out of here. Uh, please do so, 323-6232, 325-4316, Hit me up on the text, 422-4796. Let me read this text and then we can go to this line. This is Howard. Are we lacking in leadership within our political organizations? Question mark. Why do they keep reappointing these former leaders that have failed so miserably. Dr. Minnis failed so bad that persons sat out from voting in the last election, and yet they are still trying to push him back to the forefront, right? Um, we've, been a, we've been around politics enough in this country to understand what's happening here. From... They coined the phrase Reaganites. You remember that? Right? This happened in America. From they coined the phrase Reaganites. I thought it was crazy to be able to, as we go through the history of these particular things and identifying that Reagan and his affiliation with Hollywood and acting and so forth and so on had propelled him to the point, uh, to the pinnacle of the, the GOP. So much so that they'd be able to coin this phrase, Reaganite, right? From they did that, we locally sought to identify who could be able to carry this, this sort of a social honor, right? We've been looking for someone to kind of throw this coat over like James Brown after, I'm backing up, but after he kneels down as though he's coming off, right? We've been looking some to, for someone to cloak this sort of a concept and idea with. And we did the exact same thing to Ingram. And people became Ingramites. That spilt into the minds of all those who had aspirations for, leaders, for leadership, it, if you ask me. Because you did ask me. That idea spilt into the minds of every leader who had any aspirations to move towards leadership in this country first to the helm of their organization, and then to leadership in this country. To hear the idea that people are committed to you, your philosophy, your direction, is a big thing. Every leader since then has, uh, even those in the fringe organizations, has admitted themselves and, and kind of propelled their, chesses, their chest to the point where I am the answer. So it was devoid of inclusion. It was devoid of that sort of collective thinking. It was devoid of a lot of things. And whilst Ingram had these traits naturally, progressively, whether it be Perry Christie, whether it be um, um, Hubert Minnis, and more specifically Hubert Minnis, Hubert Minnis understood the free national movement. He did. And for him to be able to boast about the fact that the Ingram era is over, he understood what he had to do at that point. He had to identify people that would become disciples. But the, the issue is, is that this was involuntary discipleship. Man, talk to me. Let's get dead preachy very quickly. Let's do this. Discipleship should always be voluntary. 
when people move towards a message and they are convicted that this is where I should go, they align themselves with you based upon the course that you're on and based upon this sort of a sound. Because why? Faith come by here and I just get preachy quickly. Yo, don't fight me. So, when you saw people gravitate towards you, but Ingram, it was based upon a sound, based upon clairvoyance and a very clear understanding that this man had the elements of leadership that we lacked in the country that we yearned. For most who have stepped into this discipleship for Hubert Minnis, it has been as a result of a paid salary. I can't even get no amen. My God. It has been with the lure, or the lure of finances to be able to ensure that it might be no big nothing. Just being here, let's just take care of that. Here, I can take care of that. And once you have people hooked in this particular position, their insatiable desire for more and more and more leads them to a position where they reject their conscience entirely. They ain't asking no questions. They accept this fact. So people can't see lack of leadership. They only could see a commitment to them. And that's where leadership or lack thereof or glorified management, as we call it, falls off in this country. You're looking to get discipleship rather than being able to forge forward with the constitution of this country and the constitution of your organization to do the right thing. You would always live in the halls of those, uh, in the hearts of those people. You would always live, your name would always be able to reign in this society because the discipleship was genuine. But if, pe if you buy people for cheap, they go to the next highest bidder, the bidder. Come on, man. Let's have this conversation if you want to do that. We've got a few more minutes here. We've got 10 minutes before we can get out of the show. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. Call you on the line with us live. Go I ahead. Hey. I don't appreciate you using this station to spill your guts, you know. Why you say that? <laughs> you just giving us a snapshot of how you're thinking, you know. Well, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, ain't I, know, no reason I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, but um, um, now, in terms of your previous question, right? Mm -hmm. The main difference between the PLP and, and the FNM mm -hmm. is that the FNM is usually elected in times of crisis. Okay, the PLP is often put out of office because of tremendous dissatisfaction across the board. Mm. The only crisis event that that the um, the only crisis event they have handled is 1967. Okay? Mm -hmm. After that, after that, it was all, you know, 67 would have been the... Uh, yes, the, the 67 year, the year of transition. Okay, so so the okay. only, th only thing That's that you the only could time mean, they came in... So you could only mean um, um, no, um, um, Randall Fox? No, 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 see, no, see, see, see. okay. So where the okay. crisis happened in 67? Okay. It was a transitional year. Okay, the crisis was that, was that our people were sick and tired of what was going on. Okay. Okay? Now, that is the only crisis that they have handled. Okay. Up to now. Okay. You know, in 1992, you know, 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 all the reasons are there. In the, um, um. So give me 97, 97 and 2002. What caused the people to turn their back on Hubert Ingram? No. The people didn't turn their back. Yeah, they voted or, him out. No, 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 no. Let me no, hear no. you. Then. Go ahead. No. Members in the party tried to elevate certain people. Okay. Okay, and they tried to bring persons to the front who should have stayed in the back just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, but every time, but every time the PLP was kicked out. Mm -hmm. It was because of 
widespread dissatisfaction now, our blessing up to now, mm. is that is that the FNM, made up primarily of businessmen, have always been elected just before a crisis hit. Well, okay. I see what you're doing. You know, you know, I, don't you know, even, I don't even Andrew, have the time to stretch you know, it out. Okay? I don't even have the time to stretch that out. I see what you're doing. No, no. No, 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 no. Okay, Andrew, the financial crisis, COVID. No, no, they come in. You, they come. You, they come. In, they they you, come in the. I don't think the. I don't think the PLP like is able to handle crisis. I like you. You are wilding out today, but I like it. I you, 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 you you call too late because I got to stretch this far and wide. That no, all no, these no, natural no, no, events no, 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 only no, no, happen. No. They say, okay, the PLP got to go. Let's let's have a natural event. I'll call you off. <laughs> I'll call you off here. Yeah. <laughs> call me, call me off there because we Ready? got to stretch this far and wide. I appreciate your telephone call, okay. my brother. I got All a couple right. minutes to get out of here um, uh, to do that. Let me take 30 seconds on the other call. Caller, you got 30 seconds, the real 30 seconds. Go ahead. Hey, Howard, how you doing? I'm good. What's up? Not going to need 30 seconds. What's up, Please Grab? get a hold of the last caller uh-huh. and bring him on for two hours so he can be calm, cool, collective when he broke it down. <laughs> okay. But I can be real with you today. Okay. Fox and Brennan mm-hmm. got swung. Mm-hmm. Because what they could have done is they could have gone to the UBP and the PLP and said, whichever one of you two parties will make us the leader and the deputy of your party, we'll join with you. Mm-hmm. Instead, they bend the knee and they got crushed, both of them. Check history, bro. And the people got swung, too. Majority rule? What are the majority? The majority of people right now are broke. What are they rule in? Poverty? They, that's what they rule in. You don't want me to get real. I come on your show one day, we have a real discussion. Poverty and depression. Because I have reached a point... Where motive is motive, you cannot motivate people that don't want to be motivated. So you got to speak the truth on yeah. what really happened. Yeah, made ten millionaires in fifty years, didn't build a hospital, let a whole city rot. You want me to go on? We we'll talk later. Call me, Graham. Thanks, man. Guys, that's the show today. I thank you so much, man. Tomorrow is going to be Small Business Thursday. Uh, I have some persons signed up for that. That's why we had this kind of a conversation today, open line, really being able to chop it down and talk about those things. But I got to stretch this theory far and wide. I got to stretch this. I got to talk about this. I don't believe that the earth conspires to be able to ensure that the free national movement finds themselves in the position of power during a crisis. The earth releases this sort of an idea into the minds and hearts of the Bahamian people to say that we have to now Vote for the free national movement because crisis is coming. This is crazy. It's crazy. But I got to talk about it. Let's talk about that. Guys, it's been a show. I thank you so kindly. Let me see if I can get two of these texts in. Y'all don't fight me. These people send these texts and then they cuss me later. Oh, but I spent five cents on that, you know. All right, hold on. Let's do it. This is, however, Howard, we have no other choice but to accept the LGBTQ. We are afraid of the U.S. This is text coming through. He says, I keep myself safe in Nassau almost two years from COVID and then went to visit a family island. And unfortunately, with no regard for the COVID rules and within a week, I had COVID. I think that's what a previous texter was referring to. Okay. It says, I, uh, it's too bad Minis can't understand. He has zero chance of returning. I don't know if he has zero chance. I think his chances continue to be able to escalate. Talk to me. Because that choice, remember, that choice ain't got nothing to do with us. That choice resides within the walls of the free national movement, the consuls, MCMs, and others. That ain't got nothing to do with us. If he cares for the country, come on now, let's stop it. You're doing way too much. I can't even read the rest of this. If he cares for the country, have you no heart? Huh? You don't have a heart? <laughs> it says, hey, Howard, make sure to leave the chair up for us, uh, tall hosts, and don't root up the mic. Tell Graham, don't wear... <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. Good show. Thank you very much. I can fight you. Thank you so kindly, guys. I'm uh, had a great conversation with you all today. This is Holy Week. We're going through some sober stuff. This sobriety, being able to dig, uh, dive within ourselves, because the answer doesn't exist externally. It exists within, and so we have to dig deep and have these kind of conversations internally uh, within our circles to find out how do we get to the objective of growth, development, and the true sense of national movement in the year of our jubilee. That is what we're all about here at the foundation. I thank you for your involvement. I thank you for your contribution. I thank you, and I ask that you remain sober 
and reflective during this time of our Holy Week. Tomorrow, like I said, Small Business Thursday. I thank you guys. If you want to be a part of that, please give me a call, 827-0111. That's 827-0111. This is Howard Grant and the Foundation right here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We'll see you tomorrow. God spare. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation.